The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide, toll-free. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is a lady I've had the pleasure of working with over the past hmm, 17, 18 years. Eileen Dunny is our special guest. She's been involved in promotions in a variety of capacities over 25 years. A former rock and roll radio DJ, Hollywood publicist for films, TV shows, and actors. Eileen is now a freelance publicist and publishing consultant based in Northern California. She's been working with authors since the early 1900s, many of which have appeared on this radio show, Exonation. Her specialty is promoting books in the areas of ufology, alternate, alternative medicine, new science, higher consciousness, spirituality, and helping synthesize information concerning. And that's coming through at this very exciting time in humanity's evolution. Now, in addition to assisting authors present and presenting their messages... Eileen is a student of ancient wisdom. Now, all her life she's been searching for meaning to make sense of our rapidly evolving world and has been involved with meditation for over 30 years. She has studied different paths to the divine, synthesizing as much information as possible to come, with, to come up with an inclusive world view that satisfies her mind and heart. Joining me now from Northern California is Eileen Dunny. And Eileen, welcome to the Exxon. Great talking to you on air. Oh, it is. This is quite a switch. We've had so many wonderful conversations through the uh, 17, 18 years that I we've know. been together. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and your audience. Tell me, Eileen, where did your quest begin? You know, you've, you've done the rock and roll scene. You've been a publicist for films, TV shows, and actors. You're, you're, you're a very well-known and highly respected freelance publicist and publishing uh, consultant now. But where did your, your metaphysical, spiritual quest start? Well, I can remember the very first time I heard a voice in my head. And it's, um, I was six years old, and I was learning to roller skate. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, a voice said, where have I'm here now? Where have you been? And that kind of like startled me, and it's something that I've remembered for the many decades after I was six years old. And then I would had the fortune of being raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, and in the summer of love back in 1969, when I was just 12 years old, my sister took me to Haight Ashbury, and that kind of opened up my mind and started my path. Mm-hmm. And then I just started trying to figure out a lot of, I think reincarnation is probably one of the first things that I studied because I couldn't figure out that if this was only the one life that you led, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. So that kind of propelled a journey that took on all kinds of different forms, very um, untraditional. And then I started to read, you know, spiritual books and do some um, higher consciousness Mm -hmm. exploration. And so that kind of just opened the gates for a whole lot of study and a lot of questions. Do you think we're at a at a turning point in our spiritual evolution as well as our physical evolution as we get closer to the year 2012? Yeah, 
I think that we've been doing that really actually since the 1960s, too, when everything has been up for evolutionary change. I think it's coming to an apex now because, you know, people are beginning to really understand that the world is changing, that it's not working mm-hmm. economically, politically, especially in our country. So um, I feel we're poised and that many people are actually really working together. We hear about all the, the uh, catastrophes and all the problems, but there's a growing body of people, like the tipping point. Eileen, stand by, dear. You and I have to take our first commercial break. Eileen Dunny is our special guest. www.soldout.org, S-O-U-L-E-D, out.org. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. We all desire health, happiness, and fulfillment, but often get in our own way. Repeated patterns that leave us out of control can keep us feeling powerless, frustrated, and unable to move forward in spite of our best efforts. Unconscious patterning disconnects us from our gifts, often destroying the very thing we seek. But there is an answer. We can take charge of our destiny and heal the trauma of our history. Shamanism is an effective ancient modality that can reconnect us with our true selves, empower the creation of our dreams, and return us to health and balance. Cody Alexander is a certified shamanic practitioner and teacher with 11 years experience. Email healingpathways33 at gmail.com or visit codyalexander.net to schedule a long-distance shamanic session today. Exxon Nation, Eileen Dune is our special guest. Her website is soldout.org. That's S-O-U-L-E-D-O-U-T dot O-R-G. And uh, before we went to the commercial break, you were talking, Eileen, about reincarnation. What has your quest into the exact um, being of reincarnation? Is it real or is it just a, an urban legend? Oh, I, for me, speaking from my point of view, mm-hmm. I can't find any other explanation for coming down here, doing one life, and then going for, you know, eons and eons without um, coming back. So for me, it's very real. I can't imagine that there would be a purpose for just having one life. So I know that different um, spiritual practices say you go through the ascension process and you leave here. But my humble opinion at this point in time is that we come here, we evolve, we come back, and we we come in with a group soul, 
And many people will recognize, you know, in our family, they may have been our friends before, our lovers, our children. But we kind of come in with the same group of people, a large soul group who are spread out throughout the whole planet. We go through our personal processes of evolution, organizing our lives, our personalities. And then eventually, we turn our lives over to the greater good of all of humanity. And then we come down here and we serve, just like you've been serving humanity for, you know, the 20 years that you've been on the radio. Mm -hmm. So it's a service. And I think that looking at life as a service for me has helped add meaning and value to sometimes a pretty crazy looking world. So does that answer your question about reincarnation? Yeah, it does. But let's go back in time. Uh, since since you're, you're so well versed in ancient wisdom, what was the belief of the ancients when it came to reincarnation? Well, I think for what I've studied, which is not exhaustive, and I'm not, you know, a specialist in this, but I believe that the Essenes had a, a, a place for that. I think that if you look in the Bible, you might find alluding, it, alluding to this actual thing, but because of the, um, the way that they presented and with the Christ and all of that and the one life, that they don't explore that possibility. Um, I believe that the Egyptians... Um, believed in reincarnation and especially the afterlife that you go on and you have all the things that you had in this life and then many more riches. Um, so I can't really speak to it, to all of the different paths, but I think that it makes a lot of sense to me. I was just wondering, uh, as, as you were talking, if the actual resurrection could be a, a metaphoric example of reincarnation. I think that you hit it hit it on the nail there, that um, we are actually ascending to where we came from. Mm -hmm. But since we came into matter, we're dealing with the duality and trying to, you know, live in this dense world and try and remember that we're larger than just our uh, personal lives right now. And therefore, reincarnation of Christ can actually be interpreted based on that example as the second coming. He's coming back again, which is reincarnation. Yes, and I think so, but I also, I have this opinion about, mm -hmm. or thought form, whatever, a theory, whatever that I'm, I, I ascribe to, is that we, all of humanity, we're the second coming. The baton has been handed to us to take over from the principles that the Christ and the Buddha and other spiritual teachers have given us. So right now, at this point in history, it's time for humanity to rise up and to ascend to from where we came, which is the spiritual world, in my opinion, and that it's our opportunity now to practice and to demonstrate goodwill, right human relations, sharing, and that it's really simple. It's kind of like the golden rule. It's almost that simple. You know, once again, I have a saying, and I'm sure everybody in listening who knows me is going to say, oh, no, he's not going to say it again. I, and yes, I am. You see, I believe that life is simple. Humanity screws it up. Yeah, i got to agree with you. Speaking about screwing things up, there are those people on the world today who, who really believe that planet Earth is an experimental planet. And I know you and I have talked about this many times off air, and I was wondering if you could share your your opinions or your or your, your beliefs with our Exxon listening audience. Well, one of the um, paths that I have studied, uh, there's been many, even when I was very young mm -hmm. in my late teens, I was into Orthodox Islam, and I'm a Caucasian woman living in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I ended up finding a study group, and it really excited me. I tried Christianity, and I felt the spirit running through me, mm -hmm. but um, it, it didn't, I couldn't relate to the Jesus and the resurrection. So I had, in Taoism, I dabbled in, and a little bit of Buddhism, and then I was kind of like going, hmm, I feel the spirit, but where does it get directed, and how, how do I bring all these different ideas together? And in the early 1990s, I um, was sent the great invocation by a friend of mine, which is um, a prayer that was sent down to humanity in different stanzas starting in the 1930s. And it came from Dwaj Kool and um, Alice Bailey books. There's about 30 of uh, them she and Dwaj Kool, a Tibetan master, worked on. And those books, once I started to get in them 
and studied with um, a metaphysical teacher, it started to put everything together. So it, it, it allowed me to see that this is um, a planet where a lot of experiments can happen. It's a really beautiful planet. Lots of life can live here. And I believe that this planet is used to do experiments, some of them, you know, you've heard about, and your, your guests have talked about a plenty, mm-hmm. you know, that the ETs come here yeah. to do their work, and they work with humanity. So I started working on a book, The God Hypothesis, by Joel Lules, and he, um, it was an exploration of um, biblical ET, UFO kind of stuff. And so I looked at a book that was written in the 1920s, probably about 25, from Alice Bailey called Cosmic Fire, and I was researching about reptilians, and they have a section in the book. It says, we're not going to talk about this. And then they go on for two paragraphs to, you know, talk about that this was a race that was on the planet. And so I started to think, well, this really makes sense. And so then it helped me understand the people, the authors, and the experiencers that I was working with, that this was a real possibility I don't have the personal experience of seeing, you know, um, a gray or a reptilian in my living room. I'm kind of grateful for that, that I get to work on a different way. But it started to shape my understanding that there's a lot more going on here than we have any idea about. When I first started the Exxon all those years ago, everybody was talking about extraterrestrials, the greys, the reptilians, the nords, the swedes, the talls, the shorts, even aliens that look like praying mantises. Right. Then, then about four or five years later, there was a transition from extraterrestrials to angels. And in your opinion, is there a connection or is it possible that they are one and the same? I think I think it's possible. I really do, because when I've worked with, like, Ann Druffel, and oh, she wrote a great book. great lady. Pardon me? I said she's a great lady. Yes, Ann is a wonderful, wonderful woman and a really um, conscientious researcher. And so we talked about in one of her books, Standing in God's Light, about the jinns and the different, and they are, um, like, the... Um, uh, Middle Eastern kind of fairies. And then we started this whole, well, where do they come from? Mm-hmm. All they are, are they all interdimensional beings? Are angels, ETs? It's kind of, it's hard for me to categorize where they all come from. Are they one in the same? Well, they really could be. It depends on where your identification is. So they live in our hearts. I don't know about the ETs living in our hearts, but mm-hmm. the angelic possibilities just like the Christ essence that you were earlier talking about lives in us and that we can rise to express it eventually. So I started to think that I I don't know exactly where they all come from, but interdimensional beings, do they need to be from Sirius? Do they need to be from heaven? I haven't yet had to categorize them from being in a place, and I couldn't really honestly say that I know. I'm open to it, and I think that they all come from God or from essence. Who is God? Boy, that's a really big question. Don't they write books about that? And Stephen Hawking's new yeah. book. Um, <laughs> they say you don't need God to create a universe. I watched um, Larry King interview um, the physicist who wrote the book with Stephen Hawking, Deepak Chopra, and a priest. They had a really engaging conversation about Um, things coming from the nothingness, and that's where I think science, because they don't include um, a more spiritual or a God, quote-unquote, element, that you don't really exactly know where it comes from. But I have a thought, and as they were talking, I was thinking, well, it comes from the mental plane, the cosmic mental plane, where ideas happen. There's an impression and then it works its way down, and if it's lucky enough and solid, it will manifest on a physical plane, which is where we live. And But when you meditate and you go to sleep, you go to visit all these other planes. You know, when you get really still and you get mm-hmm. in a really quiet space, you're timeless and spaceless. Eileen, stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back after the news. Exonation, our very special guest is Eileen Dooney. And... Um, 
We're going to be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news. There's a great website that Eileen uh, told us about, and that's the website we've been promoting during this this hour. It's www.soldout.org. That's S-O-U-L-E-D-N-E-T. No, I'm sorry. It's S-O-U-L-E-D-O-U-T dot O-R-G. Soldout.org. Be prepared to spend a lot of time there. It's filled with wonderful information, and it may answer a lot of the questions that you have. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. Exxon Nation, Eileen Dune is our special guest. www.soldout.org, that's www.soledoutorg. I've had the pleasure of knowing this young lady for nearly 17 or 18 years. And uh, she, like Peter Davenport, who we had on the show yesterday, is one of the greatest assets that the media has in, in talking to people within the realms of the paranormal, parapsychology, new age, ufology. And, and I'd like to thank you for all the hard work that you do in bringing these, these people forward with their information that they share with the world, Eileen. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I feel really honored to be able to be part of um, a liaison to get this information out. And I want to thank you too, Rob, because we've had, I can't countless interviews, and you've been doing a radio program as long as anybody has covering these topics. And your work is very incredible and very special for the planet. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Quantum physics is now taking an entirely different look at the world. One of the most amazing and exciting things that quantum physics has come out with that is of interest to me is the multidimensional realms. What's your take on this? Well, I was actually, I was thinking about that today and how, you know, when they talk about multiple universes, Mm -hmm. are there 12, are there 10, which seems to be, 
I, I, from my understanding of the physical world and the cosmic everything, that there are at least seven cosmic physical planes, according to the information that I gleaned from my studies of the Alice Bailey material. And so um, I think there's a whole lot going on in the quantum world and in things that are so unseen. When they talk about dark matter, they don't know what it is, but it's there. So do I know how many universes there are? I don't have a clue. But it all seems to make sense from the cosmology that I've studied that there's a lot more going on than we have any understanding of. Yeah, people have asked me how you would explain multi-dimensions. And, and the only way that I think that I've been able to come up with, Eileen, to give them an example. I said, stand in between two mirrors. And when you look either way, you see all these replications of your image. That's the only mm -hmm. way I, I can give anyone an idea of what a, a parallel universe or a multidimensional universe may actually be like. That's a really interesting way of, of looking at it and present. I hadn't quite thought about mm. it that way. One of the ways that I help people understand that there's more than just the physical world is that when you go to sleep, you have a whole world sometimes, especially if you're conscious of your dreams. When you meditate, mm -hmm. you can release this physical plane and become, you know, part of the unity consciousness. So you're in another universe compared to the one that you do when you're driving your kids to school or going to the grocery store or heading off to work in the morning. So even in our everyday lives, we can see that we have different aspects of ourselves that come out at different times. So if we're as above, so below, and that we're made in the image of what's going on mm -hmm. here and our ability to travel through different realms of consciousness only proves to me that there's a whole lot more that we could even begin to explore. Many people have asked me lately why I talk so much about religion. This is supposed to be a paranormal show, Rob. Why do you bring religion in? Well, it's very simple. Religion is the basis of paranormal. It's very simple. It's very plain. And when people can't understand that, it blows my mind. Because religion is based on belief. The paranormal is based on belief. There are so many parallels that I've always seen the religion being the basis of any anything that we do because it all goes back to the very beginning and further the ancient civilizations that you talked about earlier which was followed by present day religions and i you know just to look at the world from the world out into the night sky i i remember my mother telling me that the stars were windows from heaven and that when my grandmother passed away, there was a new star because now my grandmother was looking down on us through her window. And Oh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. And when you look back at what you, once again, you and I were talking about that if this is an experimental planet where the extraterrestrials have been involved with us since the beginning, isn't that paranormal? So when people say, why do you talk about the power, why do you talk about religion? Am I the only person who sees it that way? I don't think so. I think that it takes a broad mind to be able to include all of that. From, from my perspective in working with you and knowing you through the years, you've been very open-minded about everything. and We've covered almost mm. every topic from health, you know, yeah. re re regular stuff, to some of the most far-out people who believe that they're walk-ins from another planet. Um, it's hard to exactly say where it all comes from, but I don't think that you can take spirit out of anything because it, the, the, what we're dealing with is the manifestation of the spark of mind, spark of fire that makes life, and it creates everything under the sun. So you can't take a, in my, I don't even know though exactly what I call religion. That's mm -hmm. such a broad topic, but it, taking the essence of what you're saying such as you can't, you know, everything is, sp is spiritually oriented. That I completely agree with. Religion, I have a hard time defining. I believe that it was um, something presented to humanity so we could organize ourselves to be a, a cohesive civilization that cared about everyone and that there's codes of the road, so to speak, rules of the road on how to treat people so that goodness, and this sounds so simple, like we said earlier, 
that that life isn't all that deep if you have goodwill mm-hmm. and right human relations and cooperation. So religion to me came down so we could help organize ourselves and then see beyond what we're doing on the physical plane and that there's so much more. And what your grandma said about, you know, or your mother and your grandmother in the stars, we come from the stars. So I think that religion serves a purpose and I can't take spirit out of almost anything that I do in my world. Mm -hmm. You know, it all comes back to that. We were talking about meditation and and I, I had a thought and I jotted it down. Is there a comparison to daydreaming as being a form of meditation? Oh, I think daydreaming definitely is a form of meditation. Anything that you focus on. When you're sitting there trying to put your bills together at night or, excuse me, Mm -hmm. when you're, you know, having a heated conversation, whatever you're focusing on is a meditation. And, you know, it can be a walking stillness. It can be sitting and listening to music, which, by the way, I love all the music that you play on the program because it all has something meaningful behind it. And it's cool and hip and I just love it. So it it um, it's at the center of all of it. I talked earlier today with Steve Behrman, and we were talking about 2012 and the transformation going into 2012. And, and I agree with Steve that whatever is happening is certainly bringing a, an awareness to the people of this planet who actually know about 2012 that, hey, you know what? We have all got to get our act together. This is a wake-up. Called. So whether 2012 happens or if 2012 doesn't happen, there certainly has been something spiritual that has been stirred within each and every one of us who are aware of both sides of December the 21st, 2012. What is your opinion or what are your beliefs, Eileen, pertaining to December 21st, 2012? Well, I think if you look at the larger scope of things and you think of large cycles like the um, equin- precession of the equinox, which takes approximately 26,000 years to go around, I don't think that you could tie it to any one day. Mm-hmm. I think that it's a time period. I, as we said earlier, I believe that it started when um, in the mid-60s when everything seemed to, to be up for grabs in a new interpretation that that started us on a roll of breaking old thought forms into new ones when the harmonic convergence happened in, I think it was 1987, that opened up a portal, everyone thought. And so it's just this whole time period is one of evolutionary consciousness. Gene Houston talks about jump time, and in the last hundred years, more has happened in humanity than in all of the centuries, you know, the last 2,000 years. Hard to say way back, you know, 75,000 years ago, what was really going on and how we evolved or de-evolved to get to where we are now. But I think that it's a period of time that we have an opportunity to really look at our planet and to be good stewards and to be responsible and to include all kinds of thoughts and paths to the divine that unify us instead of separate us. And so I see it as a time where people can wake up just like... um, Steve Behrman said, it's a wake-up call, like many Mm -hmm. people are saying. In your opinion, Nyleen, why are people turning to New Age philosophies and and leaving the established philosophies and the the established religious philosophies? Well, I think because they're limiting and they're separative. It's like if you don't believe this, you're Mm -hmm. not going to get there. Well, That's not, you know, very respectful of anybody's path to the divine. One of the books I worked on, which you interviewed um, Philip Croft, he was a former Los Angeles Times editor, Mm -hmm. Yes, and he wrote a book, um, Contact Has Begun, and there um, there was this whole organized approach to humanity and introducing ETs that I really liked. I've since learned a lot about it, and I've... I would have to go and say that my opinion has changed through the years, but what stuck with me are some of the things that Croft's um, Verdants talked about, and one of them was about a lot of the planets only had one religion, and yet our planet has so many. That showed that we are a young planet trying to evolve, and thus that brings in the principles and laws that I learned through the Bailey material, that if you just stick to right human relations, goodwill, cooperation, essential divinity, 
the continuity of revelation of life and spiritual um, wisdom continually coming to uplift humanity. That seems to make sense to me that we're on an evolutionary path and that we can, in fact, include all other paths if we just recognize the essential divinity in all beings. Would you say that Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, was a visionary? Oh, absolutely. Something was coming down through him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no doubt about it, in my opinion. And a lot of the science fiction. I can remember Stranger in a Strange Land being a book that I read as a freshman in high school, and it really helped open up my mind a lot. I think science fiction has served as a portal, as has Steven Spielberg and all of the movies, helping us understand that there's a lot more going on. What, in your opinion, has been the pinnacle of your career so far? Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The pinnacle of my career. I guess the fact that I actually get paid to read books that expand my mind as much as they do and take me into places where I have to really push my own envelope. I mean, I have certain, you know, um, exciting things that have happened, like when I worked in Hollywood and, you know, I had a, I got to handpick the media to go to Julie Andrews' home for an Operation California benefit. That was like real, really fun, you know? And so I said, oh, okay, I can do this. And then I went from Hollywood and that kind of glamour into more spiritual things and met many of the um, people that have been on your show and, and the people who have been leading thought in the last 20 years. And so it that to me is like amazing that this is the work that I get paid for. It's kind of like an actor who goes to go and, do several movies, they get to go into all these different worlds. Well, as a publicist, Mm -hmm. I've been able to go into these worlds and see things that I've never thought of before. And then with my metaphysical studies that I've done has allowed me to synthesize the material. So it does make sense in that I can talk about it with people like yourself and help the authors um, and other spokespeople talk about this. So it's easier to, um, for people to understand. So I've had a really great career. I really love it, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to learn as I work. We've got about uh, 30 seconds before I have to cut away from my next break. Is Julie Andrews more like Maria in The Sound of Music or like uh, Mary Poppins in person? Oh, my goodness. Um, I think of La Caja Faux when I think of her. I think Julie Andrews is one of the sweetest, most grounded women that I got to meet when I worked in Hollywood. And I met a lot of people and had a lot of fun. But she was very grounded, very committed to her family and to her her humanitarian work. And um, I loved all of her movies. (laughs) I grew up with them. I always had a crush on her. I thought she was gorgeous. Yeah. Can I say that? My wife's not around, is she? Good. Dodge that bullet, too. You and I have to take our final break for this hour, Eileen. Please stand by www.soldout.org, S-O-U-L-E-D-O-U-T dot O-R-G. My special guest, Eileen Dunay, and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. 
Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. ExoNation, my guest this hour, Eileen Dune and I have known each other for 17, 18 years. She is a very important part of, uh, of getting this information out on the New Age genre, paranormal, parapsychology, herbal medicine, anything to do in that realm, the realm that we deal with here on the Exxon. This lady is one of our best resources, and she's always there to tell us if somebody new is there, what they're talking about, and if we'd like to get them on the show. So thanks once again for all your hard work, Eileen. Well, thank you for being there and staying on the front lines. For so long, it's wonderful. Yeah, I wear a bulletproof vest. That's what does it. <laughs> you need one, don't mm. you? Like you, there's no other job in the world that I would rather do. Well, that's you know, inspiring. It, it is. It is. Uh, you know, just like anybody else, there are those days where you walk around feeling as if you want to tear your hair out of your head. But, you know what, talking to the people and knowing that the only mission of this show is to change one life change make the difference in one person's life each and every night that's all we try to do well i think you succeed at that or you wouldn't be on the air for so long no doubt about it quickly i've got a few questions to ask you what's your interpretation of crop circles ah interesting question i think that they um probably some are hoaxes which i don't quite Mm -hmm. understand why people want to do things like that I think that they are actually very possible. I don't. I haven't studied them as much as um, many of your guests, so I can't really address that with you know great conviction, which I would like to. Right no, but now. I'm, ju- I'm just asking but you I for think, your personal opinion. Oh, I think some of it's real. I think some of it's real, and some of it's probably hooey, you know. And um, people um, communicate with us in various different ways. And that, that's a mode that others have used, and I think that they've used it for centuries, beyond even the 2,000 or the 5,000 of recorded history. Um, I don't understand all of the archaeological um, things that have gone on that could be from ETs and Stonehenge and all of that. But I, I am open to hearing about it. I keep an open mind. Does that help? <laughs> it sure does. And... Um... What would you like to leave our audience with tonight, Eileen? What's your message to oh, them? Oh, my message is probably just to remember that we're all one and that the best thing to do is to listen to others before we stop them with our own opinions, that there's many voices to be heard, that we are one planet. And that the best thing about the ETs, it's kind of like what Ronald Reagan said, you know, maybe ETs will have to come so we all understand that we're one race and that we're all going for the same goal. And I believe that humanity has a divine destiny, and that is to be a beacon of light shining out into the universe. It's going to take us a little while to get as cohesive, but I think we are on our way. And it's being demonstrated by radio programs and TV shows like yours and global meditations. People are hungry for unity. Eileen, thank you very much for joining us. Always a great pleasure uh, to talk to you either on air or off air. Do the world a favor. Don't stop the great work that you're doing. 
give you give that oh, web. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the website that we're promoting this hour www.soldout.org. That's s o u l e d o u t dot o r g. Eileen Dune has been my guest. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. <laughs> 